Hey guys, so now that I've introduced forces as well as shown you the equation F equals MA, it's time to look at how some force problems work. The first type of problems we're going to look into actually have to do with motion, kinematics. Um, so we're going to get those three to four equations we used to work with a lot and combine that with F equals MA. So let me show you how it works. So force problems with motion is what I call this. And it says here some force problems will mix or some problems will mix forces with motion. Okay, we're going to use F equals MA and the equations of motion. Here are the equations of motion, the all four of them. Some of you might only be allowed to use three of them, remember. Okay, so remember UAM equations, that's what I call them. Um, they have five variables, V initial, V final, delta X, delta T, and A. And if you look at F, these are the motion variables. If you look at F equals MA, well it has F, M, and A. And the reason why I drew it like this is so you see that A exists in all, in all of these equations, right? So not only motion equations and variables, uh, but also in, force, in the force equation F equals MA. So you can already imagine what's going to happen. Um, in motion problems, you're going to need two, um, I'm sorry, three out of five variables to be able to solve a problem. But now instead, what I might do, or what a question might do, is give you these two, not give you a third, but then give you these two. So by giving you F and M, you're going to be able to find A, which means you're now going to have three out of five here. So you just have to jump around from one to the other. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Let's do some examples here. So it says a 20 kilogram block accelerates from rest to 30 meters per second in six seconds. So I'm gonna draw a little 20 kilogram block. Um, it accelerates, so there must be a force pushing it because I know from F equals MA that if I have an acceleration, I have to have a force. Um, and it's being pulled, let's say that way, and it goes from an initial velocity of zero to a velocity of 30 in just a time of just six seconds. And I want to know what is the average force exerted on the block. Now don't worry that it's an average force. Remember average could also be thought of as a constant force. So it's just F. right? And how do I find F? Well the sum of all forces in an object equals MA. The only force here is this force pushing forward plus F. The mass of this thing is 20 and acceleration. Now I'm looking for F, so I have to have acceleration, but I'm obviously not going to get it out of this equation because there's two unknowns. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to motion, to my three equations of motion to try to find acceleration. Okay? So I already have um, one, two, three. I have enough variables to figure out acceleration. Okay, the third variable, the fifth variable here is delta x, uh, and that variable is my ignored variable. So I'll put a little sad face here. So I should use the equation, remember, that you that doesn't have my ignored variable, delta x, and that is the first equation. So to find acceleration, I can go here. The final velocity is 30, the initial velocity is 0. Acceleration is what I'm looking for, and time is 6. If I move things around, it's 30 over 6, or simply 5 meters per second squared. Now that I got the acceleration, I can just go back in here. F equals 20A, or 20 times 5. So the average force is 100, and that's the final answer. Okay, let's do another one. Um, a 5 kilogram block is initially at rest on a frictionless uh, horizontal surface. So here's a five kilogram block. It's initially at rest. You, um, so the initial velocity here is zero. And you push on it with a constant force of 10. And you do this for four seconds. So I can kind of draw a little interval here and say that this takes a time of four seconds. And I want to know the block's displacement and the block's speed after four seconds. Okay, but let's do one at a time. The first question is, what is the displacement? So what is delta x? Um, 
this is a motion variable, delta x doesn't belong in f equals ma, it's not there. So I'm going to have to use motion equations to figure this out. And to use motion, I have to have three out of five variables. But I only have two. Okay, the fifth variable that I'm missing here is the acceleration. So I only have two variables. Um, so I need a third one. And that third one cannot be delta x because that's what I'm looking for. The third one's going to be a or v. But if you notice, I'm asking for v later. And I wouldn't have a place to find v anyway. So this variable is going to be my a. And I'm going to get a from f equals ma. So let's do that. The sum of all forces equals ma. The only force here is a positive 10 because it's to the right. Um, it doesn't say that it's to the right, but that's how I drew it. So I'm just going to stick with it. Um, mass equals 5. And acceleration is what I'm looking for. So it's 10 over 5. The acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so this acceleration here I know is 2. Now I know 3 out of 5 variables and I'm ready to find delta x. This v, I'm going to want it later, but for now it's my ignored variable, this final velocity here, which tells me that I should use the third equation. Delta x equals v initial t plus half of at squared. This goes away and I'm left with just this. So the final answer is 16 meters for the first part. All right, for part B, I want to find this final velocity. Part B, final velocity. So part B is this guy right here, okay? And now this is just a motion problem, except that I know four variables. Um, I know that this delta x is 16. So I can just pick whichever equation is easiest. The first equation is easiest. V equals V initial plus a t. V equals zero plus two time is four. This is pretty straightforward, eight meters per second. Cool, all right, so I want you guys to try this one out. Um, and it's very similar to the ones I've done, except that I'm looking for the mass of the block. So give this a shot.